in New Mexico. Let's see, and okay. Um, so since, uh, so 30 years old now, so <laughs> since 91, our program has been uh, gathering data on rare, threatened and endangered plants and animals, ecosystems, vegetation, soils, geology, and other natural resources of New Mexico um, and beyond. So as you know, rare plants and animals do not uh, tend to follow human defined borders. So we collect data throughout the Western region and into Mexico as well. So we are, um, part of the, or we're housed in the UNM biology department and are the conservation biology division of the Museum of Southwestern Biology. So we are uh, um, part of the NatureServe network of natural heritage programs. And so um, in the US there are uh, programs housed, or natural heritage programs housed in all 50 states. Uh, some of these programs are part of state agencies such as Arizona, which is housed in the uh, Game and Fish Division. Some heritage programs like our program in uh, Colorado are housed within a university setting, which is, is kind of nice because it allows for a certain degree of academic freedom and access to university resources. So um, looking at the, the heritage, uh, the NatureServe network of heritage programs from a global view, there are 86 network programs throughout the Western hemisphere. So all throughout um, US, uh, the US, Canada, and Latin America. And within these programs, there's over a thousand conservation professionals, including uh, ecologists, zoologists, botanists, data specialists, and more. So that is all to say that um, we collect data on rare, threatened, and endangered species uh, that informs uh, conservation efforts, not only in New Mexico, but it's also utilized regionally throughout the West and ultimately informs conservation efforts and government decision-making uh, at, at the global scale. And so this is all possible because we share a common data standard and data model in the Biotics 5 database. And our version of, uh, it's called, uh, of Biotics 5 is called NM Biotics. And we track uh, conservation data on over 700 rare, threatened, or, or endangered plant and animal species throughout New Mexico. Um, so. so we have uh, kind of two main divisions or two main focuses of our program. And so I just kind of divided it up in uh, uh, two focuses just as kind of just to organize it but so we do um, applied conservation science research and biodiversity data management so within the applied conservation science uh, research um, uh, focus uh, we do field research monitoring so it's um, through ecology zoology um, and botany um, and also gis analysis and modeling so habitat modeling and statistical analysis of uh, species distributions and ecosystems and, um, and biodiversity management, which is, is my role with, the, with natural heritage. Um, we do uh, conservation information development and delivery. So the conservation data generated from um, all these programs, in, addi in addition to a wide uh, variety of data sources, we have um, formalized data exchange agreements with uh, multiple state and federal agencies. Um, but um, let's see. but our, our data delivery system uh, is what we call the, the New, New Mexico Conservation Information System. Um, and this uh, hosts a variety of uh, planning and natural resource management applications. And I'll be giving a, a, a tour of all the applications later on in the presentation. But I just wanted to show the slide, you know, uh, just field research and also, you know, habitat modeling, statistical analysis, all this information goes into the uh, conservation information system. So I'm gonna start with our uh, zoology program. Um, so the zo zoology program is headed by um, our zoology coordinator, Christine Johnson, Dr. Christine Johnson and our zoologist, Jackie Smith. Um, the program conducts research on animals of conservation concern and importance. Um, so their research aims to understand the causes and decline uh, and support uh, status assessments, management, uh, conservation actions and conservation actions for these animals and their habitats. So they perform a monitoring of, of key animal species and communities to inform uh, status and trend assessments and assist in uh, setting conservation priorities. Um, so 
here we have uh, just uh, some some pinion jays and uh, I think uh, gray vireo and uh, Gunnison's prairie dog, and western river cooter. These are some some recent studies that are uh, the some species that are being studied currently. Um, so I wanted to highlight some uh, programs in the uh, pinion pinion juniper woodland. Um, uh, pinion juniper woodlands have seen a 40 to 80 percent um, reduction um, throughout the the recent decades and in, in response to climate change and so this has spurred multiple efforts and multiple studies on uh, species within those juniper uh, uh, pinion juniper woodlands and so this is just a few examples uh, so water requirements of uh, endangered southwestern willow fly catchers uh, um, remote sensing surveys and habitat modeling for black-tailed and Gunnison prairie dogs, uh, relationship between pinyon jays and pinyon pines, um, and habitat assessment, uh, a habitat assessment for the uh, great vireo. Here, so now I'm going to jump into our botany program, which uh, you folks are probably more interested in than anything. Um, but I want to talk about uh, just the, the research they do in the, in the botany program is um, collaborative applied research and monitoring on the impacts of environmental change on rare plants of the Southwest to, to support a, a management informed policy. So they uh, do rare plant inventories and work with botanists throughout the state to gather and database observations on rare, threatened and endangered plant species. Um, they also um, have a planning component. So they provide data analysis and communication support for conservation planning. Um, so there's a few um, recent efforts, uh, the New Mexico rare plant uh, conservation strategy. I'll go over this a, a little bit more in the next slide. Um, but we have a um, Brax Hardwalk or Hardwalk cactus uh, distribution habitat and status survey and a, a Kunzer hedgehog cactus uh, survey. Let me jump into the next slide. So, um, so the just to I want to talk about the rare plant strategy for just a moment. Um, so the strategy is focused on 235 rare and endangered plant species in New Mexico, including uh, 109 endemic species um, that occur in New Mexico and nowhere else in the world. Um, these species are distributed among 135 important, important plant areas or IPAs across the state. So the, the overall goal of the strategy is to protect and conserve um, uh, New Mexico's rare and endangered plant species and their habitats throughout collab collaborative partnerships between stakeholders and interesting parties to aid and improve the conservation and management of uh, rare plant species and to avoid federal listing. Um, so one of the, the tools used to, to do this is the um, rare plant scorecard, which provides an analysis and of the current conservation status of the 235 rare plant strategy species, including threats, uh, degree of protection, and actions needed to conserve. Uh, the primary use of the scorecard is to help managers and researchers identify and uh, prioritize target species for protection, conservation, and management actions. So this includes surveys, monitoring, and uh, the filling in of, of data gaps. Um, so with this effort, we've actually um, added 17,000 plant observation records since 2013. Um, 52 plus conservation ranks have been updated and scorecards have been completed, completed for over 200 species. Um, and the scorecard is also, I wanted to show real quick, just our, um, our natural heritage. We have a page for the uh, conservation strategy. Uh, let's see if it pops up. All right, can everybody see it? Okay, good. Um, so this is our, uh, just the, um, our natural heritage page for the rare plant conservation strategy. So just, just really detailed breakdown of um, all the information. Um, we have uh, maps, the actual strategy itself. Um, you can find a link here um, and maps of the, uh, the important plan areas I mentioned earlier. So yeah, and yeah, the full report, uh, methods, um, all, all kinds of great stuff associated with the strategy. So close that out. Um, oh no, it 
kick me out. Let's see. Okay, and um, also all the summaries for the scorecards are included in the uh, their the new uh, New Mexico Rare Plants website. And towards the end, I'll, I'll give a nice uh, a tour of the um, Rare Plants website. Um, so I'm going to move on to our um, ecology program. Uh, so the ecology program is headed by our uh, director, uh, Dr. Esteban Moldavan, uh, aka Esti. Um, the program conducts applied research on the impacts of climate change, fire, and land use on New Mexico's ecosystems to support management and uh, <clears throat> inform policy. Uh, sorry if my voice sounds a little rough. I've been on Zoom all day, so uh, I apologize for that. But uh, they also maintain a, a vegetation monitoring database to support uh, long-term trend analysis of uh, ecosystems across New Mexico and the Southwest. Um, one of the, the main um, things they do is a, a vegetation classification and inventory. So over the past 25 years, uh, NHNM has uh, classified and mapped vegetation on over 2 million acres in New Mexico and has a database of over 15,000 vegetation plots with over 200,000. Excuse 000. me, can you go back to the uh, uh, slideshow presentation? Uh-oh, did I lose the... Um, Oh, sorry. Can you see it now? I can Good. see it. Okay, apologize for that. Yep. Yeah. I, I can see it. Okay, Good. sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let's see, okay. Um, well, as I was, I was saying, um, so we have this yeah, giant uh, ecological monitoring database with over 200,000 plant records and 15,000 vegetation plots. And uh, as a data manager, I can attest this is a massive uh, database uh, um, containing a wealth of ecology data throughout New Mexico and, and beyond. Um, and so this is just an example of um, some of the, the recent studies. So um, let's see, this is a, a Vegetation classification of Bandelier National Monument. Um, also a vegetation classification and map of White Sands, uh, I guess now National Park. Um, long-term um, riparian uh, restoration or monitoring of a long-term uh, restoration, uh, riparian restoration site on the middle Rio Grande. And as well as our, um, a new resource that we've, uh, let's see. Okay. So this is our uh, Southwest Natural Areas Research and Monitoring Network. And this is just a way to use um, uh, natural areas, um, federally protected natural areas to actually do some actually on the ground um, climate research uh, and look at biodiversity composition and dynamics, vegetation patterns, et cetera. So this is a web page we built for the, the project. And right now it's just the, the research natural areas, um, but we want to expand this out to like BLM, the um, areas of critical environmental concern and um, any other natural areas. Uh, but this is just, we had all the information on this. So this is where we started, but I just want to give you a quick little tour of this um, application. Um, so we, want the, we wanted to put this out there to just, um, generate interest and in, in research at these locations. And so you can actually go in here. I'm going to pick on Bernalillo watershed since uh, it's nearby. So you can actually just, let me click on the, um, the legend there, but you can actually click on here and just get a really detailed breakdown of the RNA, uh, the primary features. So Grandma Galetta grassland, one seen juniper savanna protected from grazing since 50, 1953, and so on. Uh, establishment dates, elevation, uh, minimum, maximum elevation, really detailed description, um, as well as comments. You can also go and look from here, look at the actual establishment records, um, which is kind of cool, because some of these go back to the 1930s, so there's a lot of interesting historical information in here. Um, Go back. We also intersected all these sites with um, NVC habitats. So it has the top five um, 
uh, NVC Habitat, so you can click through here and actually it'll, um, oh, sorry, it's a USGS page, it goes down a lot, but um, it's generally reliable. But um, let's see, uh, go here as well. You can see um, actual photos from the sites. So, and a description of the photo. Um, if you're interested in trying to find the location. Um, but yeah, you can go through here and click through, see some images you can download. Um, but yeah, oh, also another cool feature of this is you can click on this uh, little graph icon and it'll actually generate a, um, a, little, a little graph of um, the composition. Uh, Oh, this is for ecological response units, but um, yeah. So it's very specific, I guess, to the uh, uh, Forest Service folks. Um, okay, let me close that out. All right. So I'm going to move on to um, let's see our GIS and, and our GIS analysis and modeling program. Um, so our GIS program is headed up by Dr. John Leonard, and the program supports all project activities at NHNM. Uh, GIS is uh, integrated into a diverse set of projects that include uh, species distribution modeling, statistical analysis, uh, vegetation mapping, um, animal, animal movement analysis. So like helping uh, the Department of Transportation to plan infrastructure, that has a minimal impact on wildlife or to minimize uh, impact on wildlife. Um, conservation site selection, uh, vegetation uh, change detection. So these are just some, some, some recent uh, applications. So uh, species distribution modeling for um, uh, three sensitive plants, um, I think gyps gypsum wild buckwheat and I think Braxis in their hardwall cactus. And, and another guy. Um, this is a pinion, pinion uh, J habitat model. Or it's, it's a west wide model. Um, and this is just a um, vegetation classification, sort of a, a breakdown of it. And this is our, um, um, it's a little piece of our uh, riparian map, which I'll give a tour of here in just a little bit. Um, and so I want to show a video because uh, it's, it's one of the best ways to kind of illustrate how this whole thing works. So um, this is a just a sort of a breakdown of LIDAR analysis and vegetation mapping. So actually modeling the historical floodplain just to determine, you know, uh, locations of uh, riparian uh, areas and vegetation. And then the, the main uh, channel flow. And so now they're actually able to pull out, you know, uh, uh, plant communities. Richard, where is this area? I, I'm not really sure. I think it's, uh, I think it's around Taos. Our, um, GIS coordinator put this together, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and, and the cool part about this is, I mean, they actually, our biologists actually go out to these sites and, and they, they, they um, you know, ground truth this, this data and they just uh, refine it with actually, um, um, uh, Oh, they do uh, vegetation surveys and map it at a very fine scale. And then that information goes back into the modeling process, which informs the, uh, the machine learning algorithms, which make the LIDAR analysis uh, much more uh, or much better. So uh, let's move on to the next one. So uh, now I'm going to move on to the uh, conservation information system itself. I'm just going to call it uh, CIS <laughs> just because. Yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. Um, but so this is kind of my role in the, the program. So 
you know, once we collect and, and generate all of this data, how do we deliver it to state and federal natural resource agencies and NGOs to help inform conservation planning and reduce negative impacts to um, rare, threatened, and endangered species throughout New Mexico? Um, so that's where we, that's where the conservation information system comes to play. Um, so for the last 30 years, um, Natural Heritage has been working to gather uh, comprehensive scientific data on uh, sensitive species and places, integrate this data with other biological um, databases, and make it available to agencies, industries, NGOs, and the public via the, the, the New Mexico Conservation Information System. So this is, uh, it's made possible absolutely by um, collaborations with, with agencies and researchers. Um, we're currently nearing, I believe, 300,000, I think we're like 298,000 observations. And so none of that would be possible without um, the folks below the uh, New Mexico State Forestry, Game and Fish, um, Corps of Engineers, National Park Service, and, and so on and so on. So, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so these are our conservation planning assessment tools. Um, so we have the State Wildlife Action Plan, um, of course, the New Mexico Rare Plants website and the conservation strategy, um, the environmental review tool, the crucial habitat assessment tool, and the New Mexico Riparian Habitat. Um, so I want to start off uh, just um, on our homepage because it's sort of it's sort of a portal. You can link out to all the different applications from our homepage, and you can also see if it works right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, you can link out to, um, um, so sensitive species data for animals, rare plants, research and publications, um, the, e the environmental review tool, crucial habitat assessment tool, rare plant conservation strategy, uh, um, and the state wildlife um, action plan. You can also go in here and search um, the conservation information system and get some, you know, some general information, but we have basically every every species we have database with, you know, you can search by taxonomic class and then filter to family, federal status, state status, and then uh, ranks. Um, so I'm gonna give you a quick example, just been working with the Chiricahua leopard frog lately, so I'm gonna pick on, on him. Um, so you can actually go in and, uh, so you can click on the common name and it'll give you a link out to um, our, our bison M website, which uh, is just a massive database on all of the species within New Mexico, like 7,000 species, 7,000 animal species. Um, we keep this as up to date as possible. So you can see, you know, uh, we updated management practices last um, October. So um, you can also view this distribution maps, um, you can also go, so yeah, click on scientific name. I'll take you to Nature Serve Explorer. Uh, just really great information here. Uh, very extensive breakdown of the species from a national perspective. Um, and also um, for plants, this will link out to the New Mexico Rare Plants website, which is kind of cool. Um, you can also get a little kind of species booklet here. If you click on more information, it'll give you, um, you know, a uh, number of observations, map locations, uh, subpopulations or environmental occurrences, um, or uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, elemental occurrences. And also you get kind of a, a rough distribution map. It's, it's not perfect. It's just sort of coded to, to generate this polygon. Um, but it also gives you all of our um, publications that we have available. Um, some you can download, some are um, uh, contain sensitive information, so they're password protected. But if you really want to get, um, if you're really interested in a, in a, uh, some, uh, a publication, let us know and we'll, we'll help, it, help you out in, in giving you access to it. Um, let's see. Uh, let me jump out of here real quick. All right, so that's our, our homepage. So 
um, nhnm.unm.edu forward slash data. And I'll be happy to provide um, some links out to the group later on. Um, so next we have our uh, state wildlife action plan. And so uh, otherwise known as the SWAP. And, and this is part of a national initiative to conserve uh, our nation's fish and wildlife and prevent endangered species. So New Mexico SWAP is intended as a blueprint for conservation and catalogs our knowledge about native wildlife, uh, threats to their habitats and strategies to mitigate and manage those threats. So this site contains uh, very detailed information. What's the link at? There we go. Uh, detailed information on uh, the 235 um, species of greatest conservation need. It's kind of funny. There's I think there's 235 uh, rare plant conservation species and 235 SGCN species. So, um, but let's see, just kind of give you a quick tour of this website. But, um, let's see, kind of pick on the Jemez Mountain salamander uh, just because it's a, a really cool species. Uh, it's a native uh, New Mexico or endemic salamander that doesn't possess lungs, so it's, it respirates entirely through the skin. So kind of a cool species. Um, so just a, gives a breakdown of the ecoregion where this, where this species occurs, the habitats um, within those ecoregions, and as well as the threats and conservation actions. And you can also link out to the bison end page. And um, let's see. So um, also have a, a really of all the um, ecoregions of New Mexico. Kind of laid out here so you can search through those. Oh, let me jump down to um, conservation opportunity areas. Oh, looks like it hung up a little bit. Okay, this site always works perfect until I try to give a demo of it. Uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, so these are conservation opportunity areas. And um, so they're, they're basically um, areas in the state considered um, to have a superior potential for conserving uh, um, SGCN species. So if I wanna pick sort of an area here, I can actually go in and give me some information, statistical breakdown of uh, you know habitats uh, within this, um, uh, conservation opportunity area and I can click on the map there and it'll link me out to a web app that um, is really pretty nice and I can actually change its base map to see um, imagery and so you can actually go in and open up the legend and see the um, the habitat types here and you can actually click on them and uh, It'll show you the top two habitats within that hexagonal. It's a um, one mile hexagonal area. Um, so you can click on that and it'll actually link you back to the, that particular habitat and show you the species within the habitat. Um, so it kind of comes back full, full circle. Um, and let me hop out of that real quick. So that's the the SWAP website. Um, and now uh, we're gonna take a look at the uh, NM chat, which is the New Mexico Crucial Habitat Assessment Tool. And hopefully, hopefully my link works. Yes, it does. Um, so the chat's a conservation information system for energy development planners, natural resource managers, and conservation practitioners. Uh, so the tool was developed to better incorporate wildlife values, sensitive animals and plants, um, and important ecosystem features into land use decision making to reduce conflict and surprises in infrastructure development. So this was a collaborative project between uh, New Mexico Game and Fish, uh, Natural Heritage New Mexico, University of New Mexico, and the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. And so this is, is Basically, this was a West-wide effort, and so the methodology was shared across states throughout the West. Um, so let me show you. You can actually look at the. Oh, let me jump over here first. Um, 
you can look at the at the data page and actually really get a detailed breakdown of what everything means within the map. So just, um, and also you can download the chat layers if you're a GIS nerd like me. <laughs> um, and then you have uh, so research sources to different links. And this is the the Western Association of um, um, this is the Westwide uh, chat tool. Um, so let me go back to home. Let me click on here. We actually, um, the, the the map that this was, or the platform this was originally built on was a, a Flash website. Um, and that was, it was out of date. And I think it actually went away at the beginning of the year. So we actually integrated this into another tool in our conservation information system, which is the environmental review tool. And um, but just to show you basically what, what, this, what this is indicating is one is a more, um, um, sensitive habitat for uh, rare, threatened, or endangered species. So you can actually go in here and, uh, you know, a project planner could, you know, put their location in and, and you know, look at it and see what's going on there. Um, so we would, you know, <laughs> hope that they would want to avoid these, you know, dark blue areas. So if you can actually click click on there and get a, a, a breakdown of that. And it's, so a score of one basically means that um, that's the, the highest risk. Um, uh, so if it was 10, then it would be low risk, one's high risk. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, this also has, yeah, riparian corridors throughout New Mexico, um, species of concern. So, and like I said, the darker the 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 polygon, the the, the more at risk. So this is for species of concern, um, terrestrial uh, species, aquatic species, freshwater integrity, uh, wetland and riparian areas as well are in this map. Um, so that's the uh, that's the chat. Close this out. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the uh, New Mexico riparian map or the NM RIP map. And this is just a, a really cool project and a, a really cool application. Um, so it's a, a publicly available map source that provides a comprehensive, fine scale uh, spatial view of the composition, cover, and structure of riparian and wetland vegetation along uh, New Mexico's perennial streams and rivers. So the, the RIP map is designed to serve wildlife habitat management, uh, wetland and riparian conservation, restoration planning, uh, non-native species management, uh, riparian management or riparian monitoring design, uh, refugia identification and more. Um, so I'm just gonna click, yes. It goes. So this is the uh, our web page for the um, um, the project, and you can get a really um, a project summary legend, really detailed legend. Uh, it's the annotated legend that has um, images for actually the the, the community types. Um, so very very detailed. Um, you can actually, yeah. so we're working through the whole state. Um, we have we finished uh, Upper Rio Grande, Middle Rio Grande, um, and the Canadian Upper Pecos. Still um, at work on Lower Pecos, uh, the Gila region, and uh, Caprock Playas. But let me give you a little tour of the map. Um, so you have all the, the riparian corridors here. Um, I'm going to zoom in, uh, I guess, right here, you can see, so this is middle Rio Grande, Grande so, um, so basically this is, um, like the, the, as you increase in levels, the, the finer scale it becomes, so level one is actually so yeah, there goes the uh, forest and woodland, shrubland, herbaceous vegetation, and then 
Lysianus led uh, land types. So that's generally development, um, human or anthropogenic development. Um, so if you go into level two, it takes a second to load up. It's a lot of data, <laughs> but this gives you um, a, a finer scale. So native versus non-native wood, woody species, natural and semi-natural vegetation, and riparian versus upland vegetation, and also specific uh, elements of anthropogenic land use, so agriculture development, et cetera. And you can actually click, get here a little closer, but click and um, you can see. Um, It'll just tell you what's in that particular polygon. And so this would all be, yeah, urban built up areas. So, um, and then you can go and get even finer scale um, on level three. And so from here, from this level, it's incredibly detailed. So you can actually see um, leaf retention and um, specific species comp composition. So, um, and herbaceous cover, total shrub cover, medium tree cover, uh, tall tree cover, etc. So it also links back out to the um, the uh, swap website as well. Yeah. So we try to connect all these tools together. Um, but okay, and let me jump out of here and the. Uh, the next, and this is a, a project that's ongoing, so I think it's been going on since uh, 2013. Um, and the plan is to, to basically map out the, the, the riparian areas for the entire state. Um, let me move, move along to the environmental review tool. Um, so the environmental review tool is um, an interactive tool for conservation planning and review of important resources for wildlife and habitats. Um, it provides conservation information on wildlife and habitat diversity, protected lands and other natural resources, and allows users to submit uh, proposed projects for review of potential impacts to special status species and their habitats in New Mexico. Um, so this tool incorporates um, 167 years of biological data and a planning tool. So what you see here are what we call source features, and these are aggregations of observation points, um, and they're uh, basically elemental occurrences. Um, so they're kind of uh, subpopulations of uh, special status species. And this all this isn't available. This data isn't available publicly, but it runs in the background in the environmental review tool. Um, so let me show you here. So um, you can actually use it um, as a kind of a public facing part of the ERT. Um, so you can use it without um, registering to explore data. So I'm not going to log in. So I can show you that um, a little disclaimer. But you can go in here. And, and like I said, it has the, the chat layers there also, riparian corridors. And so you can go in here and look at important plant areas, uh, important bird areas, the conservation opportunity areas. Uh, um, critical habitat. Um, and so what would you would actually do if you were um, and actually ownership as well, if you're curious, uh, wanting to go out on a survey, uh, you can actually look here and, and see what, what the long and uh, uh, land ownership is. <laughs> Sorry. And you can just click this little eye here and click on the land like that's uh, Laguna, Laguna Pueblo. Um, this is um, this will be updated uh, pretty soon, but um, with kind of some more detailed information for these polygons. But um, so basically, what you would do, or a project proponent would do, is go in here and, and actually create a a project. And oh, I'd have to log in to do it, but they basically go in and draw a polygon of their project area, and this tool will intersect um, the uh, the, the project area and and um, spit back out a, a detailed report, um, a detailed map showing uh, the project footprint. It also provide feedback and uh, recommendations on uh, potential wildlife conflicts. Um, 
So as you can see here, it'll give you uh, land ownership, of course. And let's see, so um, it includes a species list and uh, recommendations. So it'll give you a species list for um, plants and animals. And uh, it's actually just a PDF report. So this will have uh, links out to like the bisonym for animals. Um, and then it'll actually link to the, the rare plant website as well for uh, the plant list. And it's basically anything I think within a, a mile of that uh, project area is included in this list. And so there's two, but two primary outcomes. So um, uh, the first case, the information is provided and, and there's no uh, uh, sensitive species uh, conflicting with the, the project area, then uh, you have the, the report, it's done, uh, that's it. But if it does uh, conflict with um, uh, sensitive species habitat, then that actually will trigger a biologist review. So this is just sort of a real basic review. Um, so it's kind of a quasi-regulatory tool in that uh, regard. But, um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a great tool for us. It's been incredibly useful, um, and we that's we've worked really closely with New Mexico Game and Fish on this project. So, and it's constantly evolving, we're constantly adding new functionality to it. Um, let's see, okay. So I think this is the, the, the big one everybody's uh, been wondering about. So this is the, the New Mexico Rare Plants website and it was developed in conjunction with um, New Mexico Division of uh, Forestry, State Botanist, uh, Daniela Roth, the New Mexico Rare Plant Technical Council, the UNM Library and NHNM. Uh, and I'd also like to say thank you to the Native Plant Society for contributing funding to make this uh, website possible. Um, so let me click in here real quick. So basically it just allows um, users to easily search for rare and endangered plants in New Mexico um, through the searchable database, um, pretty easily usable searchable database. And uh, so the queries can be um, filtered by, um, uh, you know, strategy species. So if it's one of the, the rare plant strategy species, uh, if it was a drop species, uh, those are also included in here. So if the New Mexico uh, Rare Plant Technical Council, if it was a candidate for a rare plant, but was not, so it's considered but dropped, those are included in this list. Um, you can search by county, um, um, agency status, or, or um, Navajo Nation, uh, um, state, and also um, nature serve and heritage ranks, um, and the overall conservation status. So um, let's see. I'm going to choose uh, just my favorite plant here, <laughs> uh, night blooming cereus. So, you can actually go in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Should you can actually go in and search by common name or scientific name? And you can just put part of a common name or a scientific name, and it'll, it'll, once you click search, it'll pull you up a list of everything sort of related to that um, name. So you have a uh, Pino Sirius Greggy Eyes. So and I click on that. And so you get a, um, just a really nice species booklet for the species, uh, all the synonyms. Um, scientific name uh, with author, common name, uh, agency statuses. And you can actually just highlight over that and it'll give you the kind of translation of the code. So you have to go digging around to, to see what it actually means. Uh, oh, I'm still highlighting. Um, let's see, and it'll actually give you uh, also a rare, a rare plant conservation scorecard summary. So. That's kind of nice as well. And you can uh, click here to download the scorecard. Um, but uh, documented threats, actions needed. Um, can, uh, yeah, and just a really detailed, uh, or, you know, a real generalized uh, location map. And so I think this is, yeah, so the blue is vouchered and the, the little yellow triangle is uh, unvouchered. Um, but, yeah, similar species distribution, uh, habitat description, um, conservation considerations, and a bunch of really nice pictures. Um, that's really cool. Um, 
And that's it. Let's see. This is just a, I could provide um, all these links out to the group later. Um, and that's all I have. Uh, thanks for letting me present. And